This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. This ball bounces back when it hits the bottom of the screen. Oh, I already... Wacha. Can you make it bounce back when it hits the top of the screen? Oh, that's similar to what we were just looking at. Do this. Run the code and see how it works. Look at the conditionals, the if statement, and the velocity. Look how the conditionals and velocity are used to make the ball bounce at the bottom of the screen. Add code to make the ball bounce at the top of the screen. All right. So we got ball at the bottom. Well, let's check here. Where's the bottom of the screen? If I hover over, right now my Y value is 380. I'm going to keep going. My Y value is 393. And if I turn on this thing, it tells me the Y value down here is 400 on the very bottom. The Y value up here is zero at the very top. So what I have here inside my if statement is if the ball's dot Y's location is greater than 380. Well, if it's greater than 380, it's way down here somewhere, right? So if it is, what do I do? Well, I say, okay, ball, your Y velocity is negative five. Well, how does that make it go up a negative number? Well, think about it. If this is 400, and for some reason this is 400 Y, and this is zero Y, if you want something to move, you need to uh, subtract from it, right? You would need to subtract from that location to get it to head towards zero. And so if the ball's uh, below 380, if the Y location is below 380, we give it this speed. And again, you can think of this like ball.y equals ball.y minus 5. It runs every draw loop, right, 30 times a second, and pushes it this way. Why does it go down at first? Well, right when the program starts, we tell it automatically, right at the beginning, hey, have a velocity of 5. And that would push it down at first. But that changes once this is true. It never comes back down, though, because we never make it, right? This all just runs once. This runs 30 times a second. We never ask it to change again, so it's going to go up forever. So I'm going to steal their idea. I'm going to go to Control and use an if. I could even use an else here, right? So it would have to be an else if. How much have we gone into that? We've really just done ifs, I believe. So we're going to do an if here. And then I am going to use a less than sign because this is the top and the top would be zero. Sprites dot Y. Okay. And we don't have a sprite, right? Ours is named. Our variable here is ball. The animation is ball. All right. So ball. And then they're doing about 20 away. The edge is 400. 400 minus 20 is 380. So this edge is zero. I'll say zero plus 20 is 20. So when the, it's less than 20, what do I want to do? Well, I want to flip its velocity. So I'm going to say the ball's dot velocity is equal to positive 5. And that should make it ah, -da, up and down. So this is totally correct. This works great. I do want to show you. Let me just make sure. Yep. Uh, what I was saying, we could also use an else. Because what an else, not an else, uh, an else if. What this does is... Yeah, it's a bit more efficient. Else if means if this is true, right? And we've seen these. It runs this chunk of code, okay? If this is not true, if this is false, this is false, it would not run this chunk of code, but it then checks this. So it will only look if the ball is less than 20 if it knows it is not greater than 380. And that makes sense, right? If the ball is greater than 380, why bother the computer with checking if it's less than 20? So this should work as well. And it's a bit more efficient because the computer gets to skip over this statement at times. Cool. Onward.